Hello Internet, it's Zeg. we're back in Opus Magnum, uh, I've taken a break, I've then come back and played some early puzzles again to do some optimization, which means I'm back and all ready to have another try at this thing that I messed up last time, and I've already had some ideas about it, so with any luck this shouldn't be too bad. So more or less, what I'm thinking is you obviously need to do this in two halves. If we can do like an up half and a down half. Although with three inputs it is slightly still awkward. I might just have to do it slow, use one of the inputs to make both of the... Well, I guess that won't even be that slow, really. We'll mean we'll be using a piston. And, uh... Wait, is that actually... That won't reach like that, will it? You'll have to rotate it first. which is just going to make it slightly more slow. But that's probably fine. So grab and rotate and extend. And extend again and then uh, reset, and then grab, rotate, extend, and reset. Hmm. I suppose I could put it like here and then not have to do that extra. Ex no, they, no, that's not quite going to work, is it? Hmm. Well, you know, I could just use two arms. That would make it faster. Yeah, let's do it. We may as well go for speed this time, I suppose. So when can we get the grab? Uh, we can get the grab as soon as it moves out of the way, and then we should actually just be able to do exactly the same thing, right? Oh, no, wait, one frame. One frame later. You've got to actually let it move out of the way before you grab. Okay. Uh, I suppose we can then actually get rid of this reset and just continue using two to uh, pick up the next thing and deliver that onto a onto a bonder. The question is if I put a reset here does it continue rotating in the positive direction because it should. Yes, it does. It does take the fastest path back to its start position, not... Not, uh, reverts the instructions you already put in. 
Okay. So what we... Is there a better way to use the first arm? Because otherwise I'm going to have to have another arm. Okay, let's get rid of that and we'll just we'll have it just push onto that cliff like this. <laughs> Gonna make this solution as expensive as possible. Okay, so grab, extend, reset, uh, grab, uh, no, I'll just stick a repeat. And then that needs one less rotate. Uh, it is going to have to wait for the other arm to do whatever it's doing before it can pick up again. So when does that happen? That happens here. It's going to make this whole bit of... Wait, what am I talking about? That's not going to work, is it? Not unless I put this, like, here. And, and then do that one first. Yeah. Still gonna have to make that piston arm if I wanted to be able to re grab this though. Well, make it symmetrical. The timing isn't going to be any better. Wait, is that timing as good as it can be? Grab, push, grab, rotate. Yeah, I guess that is as good as it's going to get. Okay. So if we stick that there, and then we just need to. Actually, we probably want these, don't we? Because we can actually make the the angled shape on the way through. Just make it more expensive. And then ideally, if I line this up right, we can just have the two arms that are going to be holding these two parts rotate them into this shape on another bomber. And then just shift it forward slightly to the output. That would be ideal. Okay. I uh, don't really know which way around that's going to be, but we'll see. Okay, so what's the quickest way to get two more salts? Just like rotate them in. Maybe with a double-ended arm. Uh, grab, rotate, 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 and drop, and then re. Oh wait, yeah, that's not going to work, is it? 
not if it's exactly opposite. Might have to use a free piece arm instead. Grab, rotate, rotate, rotate. Drop, rotate, grab. Uh, rotate, rotate. Drop, is that right? Apart from the fact that I've done them all entirely the wrong direction, yes. And then that's in the it's in its reset position, so I won't need to do any more commands for that. Would I be better rotating the opposite direction and then having it move the output further? Because if I rotated this way round... But then I'd have this extra space that I wouldn't be able to put the calcification glyph on, I don't... I think there's no way to rearrange this to still have the right shape. No, let's just assume I'm going to use yet more arms. Okay, so let me just slap this in. I worked while I was experimenting with optimization. I worked out what that's actually for, really. It's so that stuff doesn't loop on an incomplete solution where you, you want to see how things are set up, more or less. I mean, obviously, it's useful for its actual purpose of aligning loops if you do have one thing that takes a lot longer for some reason. Okay, so then two's gonna rotate bond. So I could have two rotate it back one, which would put it here, and then if we can get a bond maybe like here with the other one somehow. That's probably not that likely. Or well, I could rotate and pivot, possibly. Let's try something like that. Uh, rotate and then pivot outwards. Because this one's a piston arm, which means it might be able to get it up here somewhere. So let's set up the salt making on this side. the same thing. Grab, rotate, 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 release, rotate again, re-grab again, that's the wrong rotation, rotate, rotate, and release. And then free, let's try unrotate and extend and see where that puts me. <laughs> Need to do that slightly later. Maybe extend first and then rotate. Close, but not quite. That's actually because I've built them the wrong way, wa uh, wrong way around, haven't I? Hmm. Hmm. The 
symmetry axis kind of needs to be the other way. Rather than having them both on this side, I need one of them on this side, which is going to make things more awkward. Okay, scrap that. So if we say free rotates the other direction, um, track grab, rotate that direction instead. That's going to collide with that if I rotate it back through, isn't it? Uh, yes. Oh, hmm. Well, I thought I had a plan, but I didn't have as much plan as I hoped. Okay, so let's back this up a lot. Quite a lot. Let's get rid of most of this. Instead of doing that, let's use tracks. Let's use tracks and maybe go back to symmetry. So like put this here and then use one to put that atom in. Except that won't actually need to be there, it'll be more like that. So grab, extend, reset, then grab, extend twice and then reset. Meanwhile, this does its thing, gets in position, when that resets, then that can grab. Probably want to rotate that way, then this one can grab. Wait to that. Are you telling me that atom doesn't appear until the end of the cycle? Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Except I'll probably want one of them to rotate the opposite direction, right? Because that was the whole problem that I'm trying to avoid. So maybe I want this on this side. Does it matter that much, as long as I make sure I build these two parts the opposite way round? See, that wouldn't work, because then it's symmetrical, and both, the, both of those are on that side of the curve. So you want to build this one upwards, maybe, and then do some crazy rotations. So in actual fact, it'd probably be better to build it like this, and then rotate it downwards? Like, like that. Wait, what am I actually... Uh, I'd be at like this, wouldn't I? Looking at three pivots if you build it there. Or you could build it there and then pivot one time, but you'd then have to do a lot of extension. 
probably ex wait no if I build it there I can extend extend and extend and then use the other piston arm to move the other one up possibly yeah let's try it like that Okay, just rebuild this thing again. Probably shouldn't have deleted that in the first place. Rotate, 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 and drop, and rotate, grab, and rotate, and drop. No, wait, two rotates. This is still... I should have built it this way, shouldn't I? Er. Oh. That's why those rotations were seemed like in the, they were in the wrong direction. <laughs> because they kind of were. That's still not right, because I actually need to go the other way. Okay, that's pretty much the two halves of it. So what would be the quickest way to get them touching each other to bond? You could double extend this out to here, and then rotate pivot extend. That's still kind of slow. Or if I grabbed it by five, I could rotate one more, but then I'm messing up five's position, I guess. It would be better if this piston was here, so it could just extend straight. Would that line up? Uh, no, that would be one square too far, wouldn't it? Well, let's see if I can do it with pivots and rotations. Okay, so free is going to want uh, double extend. And then two is going to want rotate that's still not going to work is it because it's just not aligned correctly I could pivot inwards with free at that point right Ah, that's sort of more useful, but again, going to want two to be down here instead. I'll put two on a rail somehow. Or just use a whole other arm. Yes, let's just go for this slightly rubbish, far too many arms, arms solution. So rotate, pivot, drop, and then grab, extend, 
fix that. Then there's Vonda, then there's an output. Which I'm going to need yet another arm for. <laughs> oh no, wait, I can put six on a rail and just slide one square sideways. That will probably work. Or well, more than one square sideways. Uh, which way up is this? Maybe we'll release six, pivot free, or rotate free, rotate and pivot free. Yeah, rotate and pivot, and then that can get to the output over there. Yep, that's a solution of some kind. Okay, is that all timed correctly? No, it's not. What have I done wrong there? It's because five loops start too soon. And also I forgot to reset six. Oh, that's probably why the time is wrong. Well, I guess six doesn't take that long to reset. It's because of these ones where I'm continuing to rotate in one direction and you're, like, getting reset for free, essentially. So the commands go out of line. Oh, and I forgot to reset another one, didn't I? What am I doing? It's better. I do still need that though, right? Yeah. Okay, surprisingly not actually that bad at cycles. Wasn't expecting that one. It's even not bad at area. It is extremely expensive, as predicted. <laughs> if I were to use this and go to the market, would I collapse into a quivering heap of nerves? Probably. <laughs> My confidence and reasonable certainty is enough for you. <laughs> yes, thieves. Very dark, Fred. Just, just totally dark. Yep, stealth armor. Okay, so it's an infinite output. Wiggly line. It's just iron and salt in a wiggly line. Wait, that's not a... Is that a repeating unit? Yeah. Two salts, two irons is the repeating unit. 
I mean, of course it's a repeating unit. I just didn't see what the repeating unit actually was there for a minute. Okay, so we're going to need at least one of these and one of these. And some number of bonders. We'll worry about that in a minute. So what would be a good way to do this? Hmm... Bearing in mind that iron is two upgrades. I mean, I feel like probably having just like the water go straight through the calcification and then just having that arm on a track that continuously shifts it to the right and then picks up the iron as it goes past and gets bonded together. Would that actually work? Maybe. Maybe. Or would there be a smarter way to do it with some kind of rotations? Because if you're holding, say, this salt, and then pivoted, attached an iron that way, pivoted it all the way around so that iron was at the bottom to attach the second iron, and then attach another salt, and then attached it to the previous molecule. That might be better. Still thinking I'm probably going to need a rail though, and a rail loop of that. And then all this is probably going to have to happen up here somewhere. Hmm, might even want those to be like double length arms just to leave an extra space there for bonders to be in. So if you do grab, oh no, not rotate, you want plus, and then more plus, and then probably some more plus. Okay. Two's probably going to gonna want to be a lot slower than that if I'm going to have to pivot one around because it will need a, at least one space in between them. So we can probably get rid of that for now. Or rather, uh, add an extra plus to one, I guess. So if we were to say have the iron be made, might want to do it with one of these possibly. And then the bond would be here.
Um, yeah, that probably makes sense. And we'll do the Quicksilver on a little, little track loop for maximum speed. Maximum cost, maximum speed. Okay, so Free is going to want to grab, it's going to want to rotate once, and then in the meantime we've got four grabbing uh, plus. And then the way this works is you do plus on all of those, and then shift the grab drop commands down one. Okay. Do I want free to drop and re grab so the next quicksilver uh, lead is already in position? Probably. That seems like that should work. Drop and then grab. And then once that second transmutation happens, then rotate again. I get the feeling this might be too fast on the three, four, five, six arms to allow the one and two to actually finish its action. Well, we'll see probably have to just space the loop out. Okay, so grab, rotate, grab, rotate, drop. That puts that there, and then we need the bonder. When that drop happens, then should be the time when one does its free pivots. So if we're going to have this be an easy loop, we kind of want four arms on this track. Because you need two of each. Uh, two Quicksilver per lead. So if we're going to make this loop as simple as possible, that would be helpful. we're going to want after that or on the time of that pivot is when it has to rotate in so probably just grab and rotate again that's too early it has to happen after this drop Can it, hmm, can it transmute and then rotate on the same cycle? Oh, it can. Sweet. <laughs> Transmutation happens before rotation. Okay. And then that's where free releases. Then, hmm. Then, how are you going to make that extra salt bond? I mean, do we just shuttle them down the track? Is that the answer? Probably. Yeah, 
it's not going to be very space efficient because I'm going to need like a bonder here to do the bottom and then another bonder up here to do the top. I don't think there's any way around that, is there? Wait, what does that look like? Could I use the Z-shaped bonder if I moved it through at the right time? No. Because it's Z-shaped and not Y-shaped. Okay, so let's just put these in. Um, Like that, I think. I'll stick this over here for now so that I can actually time this all out. Okay. So two can plus at this cycle. So it's as close as possible. Not that it matters because there's still several cycles of waiting to do. So then on the cycle that free drops, we should be able to move in the plus direction of 2 and 1. And then just another plus or two more pluses. Uh, two more pluses. And then when it's there, that will set it up for the next one to be bound on. So that's the drop and uh, drop and drop. It does mean there's going to be a lot of lag though if I don't move it one more plus. Wait. Try and think about this as if the next one was already there. See, now it would have bound, because it would already be up here. Let's leave it with the... Oh no, no, because the output is like that, so I'm probably going to... No, it shouldn't matter. Because as soon as the next atom arrives, it's going to push it one more square anyway. Yeah, it's still not great. There's still going to be a lot of lag before the first output arrives. That's not even going to work, is it? Because you're going to have to stop with it in the right... Well, no, that will work. The output will just have to be, like, slightly spaced out. Okay, so if we drop and drop that, but now obviously what we want to do is instead of having these go all the way back to the start, we want to already be moving the next pair through with another set of arms. Yet more arms. So when can we start that loop? Basically the first cycle that they move in the positive direction, we should be able to start the next ones moving in the positive direction. I mean basically all the all the arms 
this track will move simultaneously because that's how you want that timed. So how many spaces apart do we want them? Uh, three spaces apart? Does that work? Or can I put it two spaces apart? Might be able to get away with two spaces apart. Instead of that, you want this, and you just want to copy two's instructions, basically. Uh, pivot, pivot. Then we need to repeat the cycle for free. Except not quite, because it's already got a lead in position. Oh, damn, is that gonna. Mm. That's gonna bugger up the loop's timing, isn't it? Or is it? Okay, well, um, okay, forget this. Let's just make these, make the track just one way and have them reset. That's just, it will just make things a little bit easier for me. And we can come back and make a more fancy solution later, possibly. I don't know why I did that. I can just put it over here, can't I? So then drop, and then reset, and then that will be the cycle, but then that's still... 3 is still awkward, because I've still got that extra lead. Would I be better off doing that with like a free arm instead and having a gap? Probably. That makes more sense. So let's put that in there. Let's copy these instructions into it. Get rid of that one. Also, it does mean I'm going to have to delay that that a bit.
Um, so after four releases, then add an extra space. That's probably also going to mean I'm going to need to use the timing adjustment to fix that. Wait, did I mess that up somehow? Four. Well, it's two spaces, isn't it? Wait, what am I doing? I could just make seven spin earlier. Why do I not have seven spinning earlier? That was because it was timed for the for the release and grab of the six arms, wasn't it? That's why. I I should probably just redo this, shouldn't I? That'd be better. Let's move these back in. So it's grab, rotate, then it's wait twice, then the second rotate. That can happen in the same cycle. Nope, I was right, one later. Release and grab and rotate. Grab. No, wait, hang on. Don't want to be re grabbing it before it's pivoted, so you're going to have to leave one gap. So there is going to need to be one pause in that. Two pauses still. Still two pauses. And this is going to have to wait slightly longer. Because that, that definitely can't go here, right? Because that will be re grabbing something that's about to rotate. Oh no, wait, it can go there. Here. Is that really as soon as I can do that? Release so it can pivot. Wait. Release, and then it pivots away. Then you re grab, then you rotate, then you wait for the two transmutations. Wait, do the transmutations happen as soon as possible? Not quite, because you could have already put that there at this point. So you probably want it with the gap on this side. Can you, can you move whilst that atom is disappearing? Um... Or all the way soon? No, got to have that one gap. So seven needs to pivot on the release. And then seven needs to release. That would be the frame that we can move these up.
So maybe we can do it with two sets of arms, and now that I've fixed the problem with the lead timing. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I guess two or three sets of arms, probably three. Oh man, that's going to be a real mess of commands, though. Okay, so let's reset this track again to this shape. And a loop of some kind. We don't exactly know what the loop is yet, but it will be like that. Lay in all the pluses. So what we're going to also, in order to, well, I can actually make, work out the timing a bit easier if I actually put in the repeat command for 7, and 3, 4, 5, and 6. But 7 is the longest instruction chain, so it's got to be timed off of 7. So... One transmutation, two transmutations the rotation step, so you want 8 to get there and this cycle or oh, actually I guess it doesn't actually matter it depends on how long the loop to send the arms back to the start is In fact, I don't even need to time these the same as the first set, do I? I can just have them move whenever. Because they can just wait here while these guys do their thing. Grab, grab, plus grab, and then the other plus comes in at two spaces later, two spaces later. Pivots go here, and then it's triple pluses and out. Okay, yeah, but obviously that's far too early on the pivots. If I do that, does that line up? It should do, right? Uh, mm, nope, that's one out of phase because 3 is meant to start one square earlier. 
than all the rest of these. Okay, so all this needs to move two spaces later, which really means all of this needs to move two spaces later. Right, and then in the meantime, one and two need to get out of the way. Some some distance down the track, it doesn't really matter, currently. What is... Where, what even happened that time? Pivot, pivot, pivot. Did I get this timing? Oh yeah, there's meant to be one more gap here. That's why that's wrong. Okay. And then if we... If by the time that's happening we can get one and two back to their start locations, then we'll be good. Probably. So how many more pluses is that? Uh, one, two, three. So after the release, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight additional instructions after that, but before this. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have to position these somewhere where they're um, at the release point, should be where that happens. Nope, oh, that was one too many. Okay, get rid of this, because that should be unnecessary, and I think that might do it. And it's just a matter of making sure I put the output as close to the first output as possible. Let's just run it one more round and make sure that everything still lines up. Yep, okay, good. So we should be looking at this. So we'll want the output shifted one to the left. And that will start filling the output as soon as possible. No, no, timing's wrong. <laughs> timing's wrong. Okay, why is the timing wrong? Pivot, pivot, fine. That's still fine. Then why does 8 and 9 mess up? Wait, did I put one too many pluses? Looks like I did. That explains why they weren't in their output positions when I had all those pluses in there. So 
Sweet. Wow. <laughs> okay. Apparently that was pretty damn good on cycles. And rubbish on cost, as you would imagine. Plenty of tracks and extra arms. <laughs> He's very black. Very black robe. <laughs> we should go into business as Claudius. Why not? <laughs> Give us a mannequin too. Are they being ironic? It's kind of hard to tell. And that seems to be the end of this chapter, so let's see what the lead ore heist is and then this episode will be over. Alright, thief man, it's go time. <laughs> oh my. How touching. <laughs> okay, off you go, thief man. Did he succeed? I guess so. They're quite capable, dare say the best of this type I've seen, in fact. Trust, trust, trustworthiness. They'll likely stick to the deal built around shared aims. But they're not the types to develop blind loyalty. Why not meet them yourself? They're holed up in an abandoned shop along the river. Oh, we're finding other rebels or whatever, I suppose. Oh, or another family. Okay, that maybe makes more sense. Ah, yes. This woman. The observatory and whatnot. Okay then, lead separation. I, okay, I guess we have that lead to work with now, so that will be what will be happening next time in the next video for Chapter 4, House Soria. We're maybe just casually reintegrating ourselves into another house after the period of exile. Okay, good. Uh, social stuff. Habsad.net is our website where the podcast exists. Facebook.com slash Habsad.net is the Facebook page and at Saladcast is the Twitter. And next time, more house-related drama and lead. Lots of lead. It's all about lead. <laughs>